Coastal communities in Nigeria, especially those bordering states in the Niger Delta, are considering the last frontiers in an ever-expanding war against the environment and the inhabitants. Uh, consequently, water pollution arising from hundreds of oil spill sites and illicit uh, bunkering activities have rapidly become a permanent fixture, a story that has gone global without necessary uh, attracting a global sympathy as well. Ultimately, it's all been enmeshed in a vicious cycle. Uh, Nemo Bassi is Executive Director of Health of Mother Earth Foundation. He joins us now to have a chat around all of the emergence uh, issues as well. Good to have you with us, uh, Nemo. So talk to us, uh, what is the current narratives regarding Nigeria's coastal activities and uh, why should we be concerned at this uh, uh, current uh, period? Thank you very much. Uh, I believe that, generally speaking, the Nigerian coastline has been largely ignored and it can be said to be a region that is very laxly policed and where development issues don't really happen except for exploitation by industrial activities such as oil and gas extraction. It is a zone that is extremely troubling and it ought, we ought to be very concerned about the, about the coastline of Nigeria. It's a large tract, tract of about 840 kilometers. And you know, for one, we know we don't, have, we don't even have uh, a good, safe coastal uh, transportation system where one could go from Lagos to Calabar by, by boat or by ferry, go to Port Harcourt or Wari. That is not happening. Uh, except at, at very great risk to those who may want to do that. But in terms of the environment, the environment is thoroughly bastardized. Uh, we have oil spills on a regular basis, and at any point in time, there is an ongoing oil spill. And, you know, the oil spills always sound like pollution to people. It is a pollution, polluting activity, but we tend to also ignore the gas flaring. Ga routine gas flaring, the burning of gas associated with crude oil extraction, has been going on regularly, continuously, day and night for more than 65 years now. And we don't care about that. That is, that is massive pollution. It's killing the people. It's giving people very deadly diseases. And of course, it's not so surprising that life expectancy in the region is a mere 41 years. All right, um, Nemo, I would like to um, hear from you because it seems the international community and even Nigeria are not taking these issues about pollution seriously. A lot of lip service has been paid to it. Unlike what we see happening in the Amazon, where the international community are vistering into what is happening in the Amazonian rainforest. And also, the Brazilians are also very, very keen on what's happening there. Talk to us, what can we do to ensure we attract international attention and also probably put pressure on the government of the day to ensure that they help probably clean up and also reduce pollution in the Niger Delta. I believe the international community already know that the Niger Delta is very badly polluted. Niger Delta is acclaimed globally in a very dubious way as being one of the top 10 most polluted places on planet Earth. So it's very well known. The Ogoni issue, the Niger Delta oil pollution, is very well advertised and very well uh, known in policy circles. The, I think the challenge is that this has been ignored. Uh, we take, for example, the report, the assessment of the environment of Ogoni, which was done by UNEP, United Nations Environment Program, and published in August 2011. And then recently, the report of the Bayesa State Environment, Oil and Environment Commission, which was published in May 2023. These reports have shown without any doubt that that territory is a deadly place for anyone to live in. We're having issues, especially in Bayesa State, in the latest report, showing that total hydrocarbon pollution in the waters in Bayesa State is one million times above safe limits. You also have heavy metals 1,000 times above safe limits. In the Ogoni case, we have issues of uh, benzene in, in, in groundwater 900 times above World Health Organization standards. So it's very well known. The, the challenge all is why is this ignored? And I think it's because in Niger Delta, or in fact in many places in Africa, 
have been considered mostly as a sacrificial zone rather than a place where humans, humans live in is seen as just a place you can extract and think. And this has been going on for, for over 100 years. In 1895, Akasa was burned down because the colonialists or the, those who were pecus, uh, run, run, uh, forerunners of the colonial system wanted to have a monopoly of palm oil uh, trade between the Niger Delta and Europe. And so because of resistance by local leaders, the, the whole area was burned down. So what we need to do, what I believe we can do now, since we're having a new government just stepping in, is for the government to know that the environment is not an area that should be relegated to the background. Some of the states in this country don't even have ministries of environment. And so we, the government of the, the current government should understand that our people depend on our environment directly. In terms of fisheries, that is one of the cheapest ways that our people have protein from animal sources. Uh, and of course, in terms of climate change, gas flaring is against any activity we could be taking to tackle global warming. Uh, the destruction of mangrove forests, destruction of coastal line, all these are challenges that are required to be taken on, heads on by the new administration. We can't emphasize this uh, deeply enough. They just need to open their eyes and see what is going on. Throwing money into the region may not even solve the problem. We need an example of the end. And NDDC, uh, we need to sit down, have conversation with the communities, look at what the challenges are. Why are the oil co international oil companies divesting and moving from the area without taking charge, without taking their responsibility on the harm that they've inflicted on the region? These are the issues that require very careful conversations, careful articulations, and careful roadmap to tackling them. Uh, challenges uh, the Niger Delta that needs uh, urgent attention, as it were. Uh, Mr. Nimo Bassi is the Executive Director of Health of Mother Earth Foundation. Uh, many thanks for your thoughts on those issues. Good to have you with us.